to make a detached, objective judgment of whether or not the state has proven this aggravating factor to you beyond a reasonable doubt. In that regard, your duty as jurors is to detach yourself from that emotion, from that passion, and ask yourself whether or not, as we can see on page 7 of your jury instructions, the state is giving you proof beyond a reasonable doubt. This isn't a probably. It's not, you know, the state doesn't have to come over every doubt, but it's more than probably. It's more than speculation. It's more than, oh, maybe she knows, maybe she didn't know. I think she probably did. You have to be firmly convinced. And as the second sentence in the, excuse me, the last sentence in the paragraph says, if on the other hand you think there's a real possibility that the alleged aggravating circumstances is not proven, you must give the defendant the benefit of the doubt that the alleged circumstance is not proven. As it relates to this circumstance, keep in mind, as we spoke about earlier this morning, especially means unusually great or significant, and that all first-degree murders are cruel to some extent. Now, we have two elements, as has just been discussed with you. That the victim consciously suffered mental pain, distress, or anguish prior to death. Now, some things have changed in what the state has told you in the last phase of this trial to this phase. To this phase. Right? You remember during the arguments and, and the evidence presented